Hey everybody, it's Mike here, Mike's Weather Page. I'm going to do a little uh, 5 o'clock somewhere tropical update on Major Hurricane Lee. It's Friday night, September 8th. Going over all the latest today, kind of give you an idea of what's cooking out there. It is a uh, powerful storm. There's a look at it. It lost a little bit. It's still a uh, very strong Category 4. Uh, a little bit of wind shear today. So I went through an eye wall replacement. Still expected to be a major for the next five days. Here's the latest five-day chart from the National Hurricane Center. Still powerful, still going west-northwest. Starting to see this little bend we've been pretty much confident with, but uh, I know a lot of folks in Florida, especially, you know, worried about this thing going straight towards the southeast, but we are seeing a bend. There's confidence I'm going to show you. We actually might see a little bit of west movement before the bend, uh, so the big question mark is when this turn is going to happen. I think that's our biggest question mark at this point, uh, short term at least. And it's going to be a long way away. That turn's not going to happen until Wednesday of next week. So I can't even imagine they're going to be watching this thing for five days waiting on this turn. So stressful. These long track hurricanes are stressful. We haven't had one in many, many uh, years, I don't recall. Uh, and I know the anxiety goes up, you know, several days of watching. So we, we have to pace ourselves and trust the, the five day cone. That's the most official graphic right there, all the spaghetti models and stuff kind of can get confusing. So I always suggest looking at National Hurricane Center first. Uh, but there's that little bend again showing, uh, they're showing a little bit of west and then the, the north. But we still have an open uh, circle here. So there is there is some uncertainty on day four, day five. So we can see, you know, a little bit more track south before that turn. Uh, latest spaghetti models here just came out on uh, tropicaltidbits.com, our, one of our favorite sites. Here's Bermuda way up here. Still close enough to keep an eye on it, but man, these are trending to the west. But you can also see uh, the turn. The turn is very confident when we look at the spaghetti models. Here's a super blend of ensembles of spaghetti models. This includes the GFS, the Euro, and the Canadian CMC. Again, all these members very confident. Some are turning later. That could change things down the road. Some are turning earlier. That could affect Bermuda. So, you know, we're all, all watching this turn. The turn's coming. Confidence is extremely high right now of a turn. And the UK is not uh, updated on that one yet. Here's your overnight, but it's pretty much following the same suit as the others right there. Black is the mean line. Um, let's show you what it might look like. So we're going back to tropical tidbits. So the important thing to note is this. Um, we have, I'm going to go over the steering here in a minute, but regardless of that, the big story that's, that's kind of happening right now on these graphics I'm going to show you, it's going to be merging with a cold front and it's going to be expanding very large very wide and you can see that um, a large system and all the models are showing it heavily precipitation on the west side so the important thing to note is if this thing doesn't make a landfall let's say in new england northeast and goes you know to nova scotia still going to have big effects on the east coast northeast um, u.s so we, we can't focus yet. I mean, we got, this is next Sunday. I can't even imagine we're going to be talking about this for a week. So you have to think things are going to change. But what is consistent is the, a large system. Kind of reminds you of Sandy a little bit. It got larger, you know. Sandy was a Cat 1, uh, 80 mile an hour. And it did make a direct landfall, but it expanded. And I'm going to show you some uh, wave maps. But that could be a big concern. This is the latest Euro. Uh, you know, we show the GFS kind of the same thing it's a little faster this is saturday but you can see that big uh, moisture field on the west side and then the canadians almost the same thing so today's trends are a little bit away from the northeast but towards nova scotia you would have to think this is going to change in, in the week ahead here are your uh long range ensembles that go a little farther than that another one i showed this is on weathernerds.org um you can see there's a few gfs kind of pointing more you know west the mean is still close to nova scotia that's today's run so we're going to see little wiggles little wobbles uh there's a lot of uncertainties down the road i'm gonna go over here in a second one being when it turns it turns later it might have a little more chance to go west it turns early a little more towards bermuda um this is the wave map this is very interesting because we are going to see effects here early so this is next tuesday uh, now remember this is the euro it's a little slower than the others but Gives you the same idea, same waves on all the models. 
the peak of these waves here are, um, you know, on the Euro, they're showing 80, 90 feet. Uh, but that's not surge, but it's still pretty, pretty massive for uh, uh, anything out there in the Atlantic. But we're going to see these waves start encroaching uh, the Bahamas big time on Wednesday, Thursday. Uh, red here. Let me see if I can get my uh, chart a little bit better. There we go. Um, red is 20 feet. Florida, look at that, inch into 10, 15 feet. And then, then the big stuff's getting gets on the eastern seaboard here, uh, 20 foot. Some of these could really get close to the outer banks if this thing shifts a little bit. So the bottom line is this: wherever this thing goes, man, we're gonna have a lot of waves, and that's gonna be a lot of big issues. Even if we don't get a direct landfall, that that is gonna be a widening system. You can see that peak waves 90.6 feet on the euro, and this little blob over here is uh, Margo, and they are not merging to become one big hurricane. That is what's spreading on TikTok. But I have a feeling the coastal effects are gonna become a big story on this uh, in the next few days ahead. Another thing I'm watching really curious about is this. So the NHC was expecting it to peak today like 185, and then it now it's not really expecting it to go that much higher. I'm noticing, though, our high-resolution uh, models that have done really well in the past are really showing this still uh, expanding to a strong Category 5. Uh, this is on Tuesday, Wednesday, 919 on the latest HAFSB run, uh, the latest uh, HAFSA, which these did pretty good with Idalia. They're newer hurricane models. It's down in the 1918 range or 918 range, uh, which would mean stronger than what the NHC is predicting in the short term. This is next Tuesday. Even the euro, surprisingly here, I was really kind of surprised on this. The euro is initializing um, today. Very weak, 983. It's not getting good data in. I don't know what's going on, but even the euro, thinking if, if it was 980 today. Uh, Tomorrow, it rapidly intensifies this thing as we get into Monday, Tuesday, 9.40, Monday, 9.30, 9.20. So I'm a little confused here if we're going to see this thing really weaken a little bit like the NHC is showing at least before that turn. Um, and what's steering this thing? Let's show you in long range real quick. So we got a couple things happening. One is in the short term, you can see this high pressure area. This high pressure area is going to be strong. And it's driving our system a little bit to the west before a turn. There's definitely signs of this. This is Monday. High pressure is a little stronger. It's going to go a little more west. A little weaker. It's going to go a little more east. But uh, eventually this frontal line comes down on Tuesday. Strong front expected. And that's going to lift uh, our system north. It's going to push away that high pressure system. It's going to pull our system northward. And this is Margo. So the biggest question mark I have, and I've, I've been hearing it uh, more and more, is this this is the front this is the high if the euro takes its time to get there maybe that front gets a little weaker less pull north high pressure builds back in between margo and uh, lee so the stronger this high pressure is between these two systems this is good, something like we saw with franklin and idalia it kind of kept idalia from hooking into the florida peninsula a little bit so that high pressure gets strong might make more of a north track uh you know, and, and it, it's the front. The front stronger. It's going to pull, erode that high, turn it out to maybe missing everybody. So the, the two question marks down the road. This is Saturday of next week. So much to watch. But the big thing is how big the system is. That's looking like a guarantee. Um, and we're going to have a lot to watch. You know, there's nothing set in stone. I think Margot is going to be a player in this, which is very unique because we don't, normally don't have two systems like this. So. There you go. That's the latest. So uh, hopefully you got a little information out of that. We'll be live tomorrow, Saturday night. Watch for times. It'll be late um, tomorrow night and then uh, sometime on Sunday, too. All right. So there you go. Thanks for watching me here, and uh, we'll see you soon.